One of the reasons we started uh, working with Fable Vision is that we wanted to make sure that in the early part of the development that there was something exciting and interesting happened and we also realised that there's an awful lot of young people living in the North Side area and we wanted to give them an opportunity to get involved and to get their voices heard because often um, it's difficult for young people to get their voices heard in a positive way. What do you think of it the area? I actually like the area. Mm -hmm. I enjoy staying here. Why? Because I came from Birmingham, a complete concrete jungle. It's so it's a dump. It's not bad. It's not as bad as folk make it out to be. be. It's mm -hmm. quite it's, a nice. It's a lot better, you know what I mean? But it's, it's hopefully once the place has been done up a bit, it'll be even better, you know what I mean? Well. It's just, it's a nice place, but it's just not, there's not a lot to do. I like to Loch Side. I'm still keeping this as a Loch Side man. Not a thing wrong with Loch Side in general. Wonderful place, full of wonderful yeah. people. I like staying here, I wouldn't move from here. Yeah. I wouldn't move from here, my children don't want to move from here. I mean, they really do like it. Loch Side's crap. And there's too much drug addicts and there's houses getting knocked in and all that. And there's bits right in here, dead Maggie, like Maggie Steve and that. <laughs> Well, I think people had um, felt there was improvements needed alongside for a long, side for a long time. Um, and what happened was the council and Ayrshire Housing, who are a local, what they call registered social landlord or housing association, got together and they agreed that they should knock down the two streets that were least popular and that people were, were most worried about and build a whole new uh, set of houses. Around 140 housing units, as they call it, um, are being demolished, mostly in eight in a block style, and 100 houses are being built in its place, and they're mostly going to be houses with just a small number of flats. Um, there's going to be a completely new street layout, new street names, um, and that those people who lived in the houses that are being demolished that are coming back have had a chance to choose the house type they want and even where they want to live. What we know is that they're looking to demolish the houses in um, June, July this year and then that means that after everything's done that there will be developers on site from about September or October this year. That's the hope, um, it isn't set in stone. And that means that by summer of 2008, or late summer, people will be moving into the first of the new houses. Well, Ayrshire Initiative's got involved because we were talking with Ayrshire Housing and they were telling us all about the great plans they had for Lochside. And we thought the houses looked great, we thought it was going to make such a difference to people's lives. But we also realised that turning around an area is a bit more than new houses and that what really matters in a place is the people who live in it. And that there's going to be a lot of people are in Lochside who are living around the new houses, there's going to be people coming back to live in the new houses and there's going to be people who are completely new to the Lochside area coming into it which is really exciting. So what we wanted to do was to make sure that people felt a pride in the area, to give people an opportunity to have a real involvement in what was happening in Lochside so that they weren't just sitting back and waiting for people to do things to them, that they could say, no, I want this, I want that. When we moved 
in. There was no pavement. You know, it was just ground. Because when you come out to go to school, it's quite funny. You were, your mother told you, you know, when you come back to school, we knew our house because it had a, a workman's hut in front of your window. So you knew that was your new house, you know. I moved there in 1932. I was six year old when I moved. But I mean, that's what, 75 years ago. Right, I've been in that street 75 years. But um, as I say, it was different then. You knew everybody in the streets. To the bottom of the street to the top, you could have said, oh, and that was section of buddies' hoods. No, no, you don't know the folk running about you nowadays. A lot, a lot of decent folk, a lot of folk did well for us all out alongside. And at that time during the war, the gardens were nearly all cultivated with uh, vegetables because they were encouraged then to cultivate your garden and grow vegetables. And my grandfather had a big free corner the garden and he had it all planned to do it in the vegetables as I did other folk. And what he got stolen was negligible. No, I think were, everybody was friendly in their days. I don't know, it's just not the same nowadays. Maybe that's because I'm getting old. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it is different. There's a sense of community, not in an organised way, but just folk got on with one another, helped one another out in general. And there were some bits got reputations, which was worse than others. Mackie Street always had a bad reputation. But they weren't near as bad as they were painted, because there were some of them that were pushes get broken into, but they never ever broke into the, the houses in the rain area. They left the rain folk alone, I think that was the idea. Of it. Actually, I can remember, at, we back at that time, we'd be back end of the war. The people, Sunday newspaper, paper, it was a uh, kind of popular. It was more popular than what the news of the world is now at that time. And they published an article about Mackey Street, the kind of big banner headlines, the worst street in Britain. And it got that kind of reputation. Because actually at that time, there was a lot of kind of wild lads in it. And there was one, but I can't remember if it was at this side or the other side of Mackey Street, there was a block of houses. They called it Hell's Kitchen. That was after a famous slum area in New York. That time you made the pictures of the Bowery Boys and that, and it got that name. And actually, they were quite proud of the name. <laughs> they didn't think it was derogatory in any way. They took a bit of pride in it, Ken. But I kind of looked at the boys, and I kind of rough time they had in that. There are very few of them living now. No, died because a lot of them were turned into alcoholics. Quite a few landed in the jail. Or one did time for one, at least one I know, did time for murder. But everybody kind of knew everybody. They had a wee difference. Every street amongst the boys had a kind of street gang. We used to get the old kind of gang fight, flinging stains at one another. But they were never any real viciousness. In fact, I kind of actually remember two gangs actually getting into blows, getting right up face to face. It was always a kind of there was a few years between them. Ken. Well, I was brought up in the area and. It as the years go by, it's not as community-minded as it used to be. It used to be mere, like, can folk take a lot more interest in the mm -hmm. place and, and whatnot. But, I mean, as, as the years go by, it's changing. Yeah. You know, there's, there's more people coming in and I take for other areas and it's it's no as community thing as it used to be. It's no, it's no as good as it used to be. It's still a good area, but no, the way it used to be, it's, there's a lot of change. They had the galas and all that. Uh, usually, we used to have they? galas and stuff, but we don't have nothing. Summer there. fates and things mm -hmm. like that, but there's nothing. There's just nothing. It's just what we do at the youth club. I think it's been downhill a wee bit, uh, <laughs> to uh, be honest. It uh, has actually, uh, since they started moving people out. You know what I mean? It's no, I think even before that, it's, it just takes a couple of bad folk to be in and it does go to port. Because when we moved in, it was, it was nice, it was in a good block, and the street was always clean. The, Nobody seems to bother anymore about tidying up after themselves or no. cleaning up their mess. So maybe if they're making all these new houses and making it nice, it'll make folk want to keep take it. care of their house and their gardens and, and keep it nice and tidy and clean. <laughs> We were told about 18 months ago, we were given a letter saying that they was going to knock it down. Then there was an interview and everybody went to see the new development and the first set of plans which were different to the ones that there were now. And we were asked if 
we would want to move back in and the types of houses we were looking for, sizes of houses. They did a lot of canvassing first to see sizes of families and sizes of houses required and from that they um, redrew the plans. This is the first I've been because I'm working and a lot of the meetings are just during the day. They're not, it's not, well I've not known any to be at night. Uh, so I, I've only been the day and, and found out about it then. But they're, they're quite helpful like when you come in they will explain to you and tell you what you want to know. So when you do come to them they are. Mm -hmm. They're quite good. Uh, we've been kept in the loop. Um, each family that's moving back in has made slight changes to their, their actual house to suit their personal needs, which is quite good. There's a lot of rumours fly about. I mean, we're in a house that's not getting knocked down. We're just getting ours done up. So we'd heard all these rumours that it's 2015, it's getting done up. And the man in there says it's not. It's as soon as they start doing their houses, the, the older ones will get done, so. This is Gold Street. This is where I stay. The middle block is getting knocked down and getting rebuilt. The house I live in is only getting renovated. I think the new houses will look nice, but it'll make the old houses run a bit look a bit odd. Um, what do you think the new houses are going to do to the area? Um, well, it's going to clash it up. In which way do you think it'll make a difference to the, to the area? <laughs> not for long, no. No? No. Why, why do you not think? Because it's the same fault they're going to put back, back in. in. Well, if there's only going to be about 80 of them moving back in, I mean, you so take the, the young said. ones, it's a little bit back in. The young ones, aye. They'll well, have to be a it. bit more selective. They're not sitting the down for them, sitting in a box. They're sitting, they're going to be sitting in a nice wee house. Aye. Because my, I, we couldn't afford this house up mm -hmm. here. Because my man wants. I know it will look nice, and I mean, mm. once it's all finished, it'll be a good, nice place, but I just think it'll, it'll just make us look. Nice. But uh, I don't know. I run, really run they down the area. They'll be the better really part <laughs> They'll be with the lower class, maybe yeah, the upper class. Upper class. It should regenerate the place, not mm -hmm. I mean, at least brighten it up, not I mean, make it look a bit better, not I mean, and rather than the way it is just now, not I mean, the place is kind of starting to look a bit run down, not I mean. Really, I don't know how it's going to work these new houses. What I'm saying to everybody is, these new houses, what they'll need to do with the rest of these houses in your street and the surrounding streets is bring them up to a standard to blend in with the other houses. They're not going to get away with laying your houses the way they are. I suppose it'll depend who they put in them. It'll not work. It won't work. It'll make, it'll make the other area look terrible. I don't think there's enough done to make, the, make it look the land community. They'll no, they'll no, no. do enough to make like, these people going into this area. Obviously there's people, that, there's families that have already come out of there going back in, but the majority of them are not. There's so there's there. going to be a lot of new people and there'll not be enough done round about to bring the areas you know, together, the 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 well I can't see them doing it anyway. No, I doubt it very much. How's how's the place been affected by? Everything? Well, the fire engines have been out about ten times this week, um, over the weekend and up to now. So it's just. And people are coming in and lifting the fences and the slabs out the surrounding gardens and you know I'm out hanging out my washing. There used to be a lot of huts in that here. Oh my god, go on to that it's catching on to that catching on to that so that who's spun up maybe. When did it happen? Eh, uh, Friday night. It was two yesterday. Cause I was got to fit my training. And uh, two fire trucks come in. Then last night again, I was not to Tesco. Two fire trucks come in. It's not just wee ones; it's like big ones. Then folks try to like, pull the boards off the windows. I've been here and run there. Bit of ground, they're just looking for ideas. 
So I came up with the idea that maybe allotments or wee garden places. You don't actually see nothing like that around about here. There's no, I mean, there's nothing for people to do sort of thing. Perhaps you sit in the corners and you have a drink or whatever it is. Whereas if there was something like that, for the old folks that's going to be moving in, I mean, a lot of the ones that's moved out aren't they going to be moving back. So we don't know who's going to be moving in and who isn't. And as far as I know, there's going to be disabled houses as well. So it's things that they'll not be able to do themselves. And it gets them out of the house for an hour. I mean, there could be people housebound there that they don't see any day. They have their meals and wheels. It could be the only piece that people pay people to see that day. And that's only for five minutes. It's like, there's your meal, bye, see you tomorrow. Whereas, if they've got a wee garden thing there, they can come out and sit for an hour, get to know the rest of the neighbours, have a leather, cup of tea, and just go on and have, make a wee community out of it instead of everybody hiding behind their curtains and fear to look out or fear to come out. I mean, too many areas go that way. Well, I'm hoping that there's going to be benches and chairs and maybe a small child area in one section. That way the community can get together in the summer evenings and things like that and have a chat, maybe do barbecues and things like that. I've got a wee boy at 10 and there's nowhere for them to go, there's nowhere for them to play. I think it needs a, there is a kind of youth centre thing, but it's not it's few and far between things that are on. I think it needs a, a place where they can all go and maybe hang out or, or do stuff, because they all just run about the streets just now, <laughs> play football and get into bother. We're in Murray Street Park, it's pretty crud actually, there's four swings. There would used to be more stuff to do at it, but there's no, no really, no like people take interest in it. What happened to all the stuff? Everybody vandalised it, broke it, and then the council decided what's the point in this and ripped it down and left us with this. Why do you think they vandalised it? Because they thought, oh well, we're too old for this, uh, we ain't no getting it, so we'll just vandalise it. They think the big cause you can vandalise uh, being stuff. The, ooh, what else do you think Lobside needs? A cassette in one word. A bomb. A football pitch. A pool. <laughs> a pool. <laughs> if there's running for the wains, we need adults along with the wains to control the wains. We can't expect the other folk to do it. The mum should all take it in turn watching the kids. Ken, all the swing parts get We can't expect it all to be paid for. As our communities have got more stuff to do, like at White City they've got a cage and that's what everybody's fighting to get here at Oakside. This is all the trophies we've all won and medals for all different areas and we want to hold one in Oakside but we can't do it because we've not got a cage and Douglas Campbell said if we took all the trophies to him, he said he might consider again as a cage but he never came down and there's this guy, it was Tommy, that was talking to oh, us today. And this guy tried to steer a football team in Lokeside and the committee said no, there's no point or the boys will cause too much trouble. So the guy went down to White City and he's doing it now and they play the balls and all that. Who's here? Tommy! He's a shot at you, big man! Aye, right, on he's go. Right, right. What would you like in Lokeside for all the boys and that? I think the young ones in Lokeside deserve the same treatment as the, the youngins in Wollaston. I've been hearing that the youngins want a football team. There's plenty of blades of grass around here that can put football nets up and, and just give them something to do. And what do you think about the committee? Well, maybe the committee should look into investing in a couple of, yeah, a set of goal posts, sets of strips, training equipment, and then the youngies will have something to do. Especially with the summer coming up. Because you were locked to start a football team in that's right. Well, unfortunately, we couldn't do it with certain wee bricks that were getting thrown in our way, but we've managed to start one in Wallace Town, and that's for 18s and over, but we'd like them younger. So there's no point in us having one team in this area if we haven't got other teams to play, and we prefer it all community teams. Lockside, Dumullen, Whitlitz, Wallace Town. Then you can start your own league, any age groups. The boys actually brought their trophies and their medals down to show you. I mean, and since then, they've actually won more medals. They won another competition a couple of weeks ago. That's a dream of mine not to get, is this Mooga. So it's of an evening, you're going to be, everybody's going to know exactly where he's will be because he can, that's where he's will be. There's no, there's no question about that. He's inside that park, as long as it was supervised. If we get that park up and running with somebody supervising it, in conjunction with yourselves, the youth running it, see who goes on it, what time they go on it, what time they come off it.
Rab Hill, <coughs> who works with the community care development. I mean, he's really, really good with him. He is really, really good. And I admire him because he takes time out and he, he does. Right, he, comes, he comes to my door and he'll say, right, get the boys, make sure they're here for this time. I've got a football tournament. And he really does care about the, the, right, the, the children. Does, the, community, right. the community, he really does. Mm -hmm. And I admire him for that. I mean, because if it wasn't for him, I mean, my boys would be getting in a lot more trouble. Mm. And I know they would. They'd be getting in a lot more trouble.